It was once regarded as the greatest anti-nuclear war film ever made, with its subliminal message about how the constant proliferation of nuclear weapons by the USA and USSR would eventually lead to massive global catastrophe. Released in 1968, the film kickstarted a massive franchise which is still going even today. Yes, we're talking about Planet of the Apes, and this is Science 5. Planet of the Apes was inspired by the 1963 novel La Planète des Singes, also known as Monkey Planet by Pierre Boulet, with a screenplay written by Michael Wilson and The Twilight Zone's Rod Serling. The film's story though is set in another place and another time. Three astronauts, Taylor, Landon and Dodge, who have been in suspended hibernation, crash land on a desolate planet thousands of years after they left Earth. Lost and alone in the desert, their situation reaches a point of crisis when they discover that not only are the humans on the world mindless, mute animals, but the dominant species controlling them are in fact intelligent, human-like apes who have the ability to speak, with the how is this possible explanation being one of the key plot points of the story. Upon arriving at Ape City, the audience gets to see how the simian hierarchy operates. At the top of the social class are the highly intelligent orangutans, who not only govern society, but also make the laws and pass judgement on any crimes committed. Below them are the chimpanzees, who fill various roles surrounding science and medicine. While last of all are the aggressive gorillas, who are in charge of the military and security force. Yet despite the three-tier structure, there is one aspect of ape society which is equal across all three classes, and this is their religion. The apes eons old deity was an orangutan known as the Lawgiver, who wrote the sacred scrolls which set out the society's laws and customs. One thing worth noting is how the ape city is represented in the film, especially as the apes are clearly advanced in areas of science and medicine. In both the novel and the 1970s animated series, the ape cities were much like our own, with established infrastructure and advanced technology. Unfortunately for the film, all that had to be scaled back to something far more primitive due to budget constraints. Without doubt, one of the most fascinating and frightening aspects of the film is how the apes treat humans, which is intentionally designed to be the exact opposite of how humans treat animals, especially apes and monkeys. In this scenario, it's the humans who end up in zoos, display taxidermied in museums, and are experimented on, which really is the case of the shoe being on the other foot. It's no surprise the film's success was due to the outstanding design and application of the ape makeup which was not only highly convincing and authentic in appearance, but was also very effective in allowing the characters to express their emotions, which is one reason why audiences were so captivated by it. Featured in the film are the three main protagonists, George Taylor played by Charlton Heston, Cornelius played by Roddy McDowell, and Zira portrayed by Kim Hunter. Whilst for the antagonist there is Dr. Zayas played by Maurice Evans. Even though Zayas himself isn't actually an evil or bad character, Ultimately, he's the one who knows the real reason why humans need to be harnessed and subjugated. The film was such a success that by the mid-1970s, four additional movies, an animated series and a live-action TV series had been made. Yet it's the third movie which is definitely the pick of the group, as it takes the concept of the original movie and effectively turns it on its head. In that instance, contemporary Earth is visited by a spaceship which is crewed by three talking apes, and two of them are Cornelius and Zira. The film takes itself very, very seriously and is definitely an interesting perspective of how humanity deals with the apes. And because of that, it's a must watch for any apes fans. One of the more interesting discussion points of the film is Taylor's view of contemporary humanity and his desire to leave Earth. Considering the film was made in the midst of both the Cold War and the Vietnam War, it's likely his opinion was intended to reflect real life nihilistic attitudes of the time. Under the outstanding direction of Franklin J. Schaffner and the great soundtrack by Jerry Goldsmith, Planet of the Apes was a massive success upon release. However, with all the follow-up franchise movies and TV shows being quickly released soon after, the original anti-war message behind the film ended up being slowly filtered out. So who should see the film? There is no doubt the movie is designed for an audience of all ages, but as it's a bit of a talk fest at times, young children might struggle to stay focused although the visual image of the apes alone will be enough to maintain their interest. So if you haven't seen Planet of the Apes before, then you're in for a treat. Now amongst all the sequels and the prequels and the reimaginings and the reboots and the remakes, sometimes you just have to go back to the original source material to understand why it's all so good. And for that reason alone, it's well worth watching.